Hi and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'll be going over branding. More specifically, how to customize the look of your brands, as Authentic allows you the ability to customize each domain separately. Also, this video is made in collaboration with Authentic Security. Now, I'm not the best designer, but hopefully this video reveals the basics where you can let your creativity take over. So, let's get started. First, this video assumes that you have your domain or domains already set up with proper DNS records, both at your registrar and in your preferred reverse proxy. Also, be sure that you have your media folder bind mounted in your Docker Compose file so that it is accessible. We'll need this later to be able to upload files to. Speaking of uploading files, you can get the files you want into your media directory by using this command, where wget is the command and dash o is the output parameter followed by what you want to name the file if you are in the current working directory. Otherwise, type the full path and file name. And lastly, the address where the file is being downloaded from. Though in this example, I'll be using the FileZilla client. You can also use WinSCP if you're on Windows or any other client with SFTP or Secure File Transfer Protocol capabilities. Links to these tools and Authentic's explanation of brands will be linked in the description below. If you haven't already, create or download your custom backgrounds, application icons, and favicon files. Then, launch and connect to your Authentic host with your preferred SFTP client. Again, I'm using FileZilla. Once connected, navigate to your media folder that you've bind mounted for Authentic. From here, just drag and drop your files from your local system or do as I am and create a custom folder if you prefer. Now, navigate to your Authentic instance and log in as an administrator. Click on Admin Interface, then click on System to expand it. Click Brands and click Create. For the domain, enter the domain you've established in your DNS records and reverse proxy. For me, that is auth.sweetshopcreations.com and click Create. We'll now check to see just what simply creating this brand does by opening a new tab and navigating to the domain address we entered. When new brands are created, they will load the default authentication flow as seen here. Now let's get to customizing. Jump back to the admin interface tab and click Edit for the brand we just created. Under Brand Settings, change the title to something suitable for your brand. I'll enter Sweet Shop Creations. For logo, type in the path and file name to your logo file. If you don't remember, you can always go back to your SFTP client to double check this info. And do the same for the favicon file. And click Update. Now, Let's jump back to our New Brands tab and refresh the page to see our changes. As you can see, the favicon and part of the wording in our browser's tab have updated accordingly, as well as the main logo for the login page. Now, we'll jump back to our Admin Interface tab and click on Settings under the System menu. The disclaimer here is that any changes we make here will be applied globally. So, for further customization, we can change our avatars, which is the icon denoting your user profile. You can see in settings the avatars can be changed with the following list of options. Just type in your choices separated by a comma. So the choices are none, gravatar, which is what I'll be using. It's a free service used with your email where you can upload a custom profile picture. I've already signed up but disabled my profile. So let me go back and enable it really quick. Initials, which as default, your avatar will be your initials in a colored circle as displayed here. Any URL to an image hosted on another server, any of these placeholders, or an attribute path with the file field to allow users to upload custom avatars for themselves. The next thing we can customize are the footer links, and those are the text links you see near the bottom of the page, as seen here. Just be sure to type your links in as formatted in the JSON example here, or in the YAML format as I'll be doing dash space href colon space followed by the URL address of your choice. On the next line, hit space twice and type name colon space followed by what you want the text to say for your link above. Then just repeat this process for however many links you want displayed. And click save. Now if you click refresh here within the admin interface, Notice my avatar is updated to whatever I uploaded with Gravatar. 
If we go back to the tab with our new brand and click Refresh, notice the footer links we created are now populated down at the bottom of the page. These footer links would also be an awesome way to list the links to all your other brands. I'll quickly click each one to show that they redirect to their destinations as intended. Notice the welcome message still says welcome to Authentic. Let's change this to be more appropriate for our brand by modifying the respective flow. Click back to the admin interface tab and click on flows and stages to expand it. And click on flows, find the default authentication flow, and click edit. Change the name to what you prefer. I'll change mine to Sweet Shop Creations. And do the same for the title. This is what is displayed as the message on the login screen. So for me, I'll just change the word authentic to Sweet Shop Creations. Next, update the slug. I'll just remove the word default and replace it with Sweet Shop Creations. I use a password manager, so for the best compatibility, I'll click and expand behavior settings and enable compatibility mode. Then scroll down and click to expand appearance settings. Change the layout to your preference. I'll demonstrate what each layout looks like in a little bit. But for now, I will change the background by clicking on Choose File. A window will pop up allowing you to select a background image from your local system. Choose the file and click on Open to select it. Then click on Update to apply the changes and upload the background. The reason we're updating all this is to make the flow unique to this brand. Otherwise, if we leave the name and slug as the defaults, for example, any other flow using the default will share any layout or background modifications. Anyways, to see the changes we just made, load your new brand in a private or incognito window, or close the current tab you currently have open for it and relaunch it. As you can see, the custom background has been applied and the message in both the browser tab and the main login prompt area have updated to say, welcome to Sweet Shop Creations. I'll now jump back to the admin interface and cycle through the different layout options for our new custom flow and refreshing the tab after each change. Here is what content left would look like with the login prompt to the left of center and footer links right of center. Here is content right, just the opposite of content left. Here is sidebar left. The entire left quarter of the page is the login prompt with the footer links at the bottom of this. And finally, here is sidebar right, the opposite of sidebar left. For this particular design, I prefer and will change the layout back to stacked. Now, let's log in and see what else has changed. As you can see, my avatar from Gravatar is loaded from the email address associated with my username. Once in the application dashboard, you'll notice our custom logo is now in the header. And again, our custom avatar is loaded. Clicking on Admin Interface, we'll see our custom logo is also populated at the top of the sidebar menu and the custom avatar at the bottom left. Basically, anywhere your profile is displayed by Authentic. Now, let's go ahead and log out. Uh-oh, did you see that momentary change in the background? We don't want that. It messes with the whole look and feel of the flow. Pun not intended. So, let's fix that by jumping back to the admin interface. Clicking on Flows. Then, finding and clicking Edit on the default invalidation flow. We'll want to customize this as we did the default authentication flow. Change the name to your preference, do the same for the title, as well as the slug. Next, click on Appearance Setting. To make the logout experience more cohesive, be sure to choose the same layout and background as was used for our customized authentication flow. And click Update. Now let's test it out. 
I'll go ahead and close out the current tabs and relaunch the brand we've been working on. I'll then log in really quick and log out just as quick. You'll notice my background stayed consistent this time. So you'll want to take these same steps in any other flows you incorporate that may cause an inconsistency. The next thing I'll show is how to get the username and password prompt on the same page if you prefer not having to load a second page for the password prompt. Jump back to the admin interface. Click flows if not already there and find and click on our brand's custom authentication flow. Not edit, but the flow itself. Next, click on stage bindings. Find the default authentication identification stage and click on edit stage. Under password stage, click on the field that has the dashed line and choose default authentication password or your own custom password stage if you've created one. And click on update. Then Tick the box next to the default authentication password stage and click delete. And click delete once more in the pop-up window. This removes that second page password prompt. Let's test this out by closing the brand's currently open tab and launching an incognito window. And then navigate to the brand's address. There we have it. The username and password prompt are on the same page. Logging in, we'll see that we're no longer presented with a second page prompting for a password leaving us on the application dashboard. Speaking of application dashboard, let's run through the process of customizing any of your loaded applications. I'll use image in this example. We'll give it an icon and description. First, click on more details. Then click on edit. Under the overview tab for image, click on edit. Click on UI settings to expand it. Next, for icon, Click on Choose File, and just as we did for selecting our custom background, select the icon image file for our application. Optionally, enter the publisher's name, and enter a brief description of the application. Finally, click Update. Once more, let's test this out by launching an incognito window and navigating to our customized brand's address. Then, proceed to log in. Once the application dashboard is loaded, we can see that image now has an icon, and clicking more details shows the publisher we entered, as well as the description underneath it. Oh, one other thing. Since we changed a couple of the default flows, they momentarily no longer exist if you're trying to crank out multiple customized brands back to back. Now, they do eventually cycle and come back, but if they don't, or you need them right away, just click back to the admin interface. Click and expand customization. Click on blueprints. Find the default flows that you are missing and immediately need. And under Actions, click on Apply, which looks like the Play button. Now, if you click back on Flows, we'll see our default authentication flows back, as well as our default invalidation flow used for logging out. I hope you found this video useful, and if so, please click that like button and share. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for any other future videos. Thanks for watching.